I thank God for another opportunity to come to you with another podcast of the prodigal son. My prayers come out of Ephesians, the first chapter, starting with the 15th verse. It says, Ever since I heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called His holy people who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth, I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong, and you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too hard to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. I, that is my prayers for you. That is my prayers for myself. That is my prayers for everyone that walks the face of this earth, that God would open the eyes of our understanding and let us see just exactly what He has in store for us if we would just allow Him to be what He wants to be in our lives, and that is our Lord and Savior, our trust, our healer, our Oh, our deliverer from everything. I pray today that you would guide, let, allow God to guide and direct you through His Word. Allow the Holy Spirit to touch you and give you the understanding that God wants you to have. Now, let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I praise you and I thank you for your Word Oh, and the guidance that you have given us through it. I praise you and I thank you. Holy Spirit, touch my heart, touch my mind. Guide me through everything that I say and do today. Use me for God's honor and his glory. And I'll forever give God all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. I'm going to be taking my scripture Today, out of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and I, I, I think I'm going to read this story first, because this story just ties right into to what I'm talking about. It, say, it says, in 1932, 200 sailors were holding onto ropes attached to an airship, the USS Akron as they attempted to moor the giant airship to a steel mast in San Diego. Suddenly, however, the airship shot straight up 
into the air. Some of the men hung on to the lines and were swept up with the ship, soon falling to the ground. Several were killed. After all the rest had fallen, one man kept hanging on. He could be seen as the airship soared high in the sky. People were screaming and fainting. They knew this sailor couldn't hold on on much longer. And at any minute, he might fall back to the earth to uncertain death. But after an hour and 45 minutes, when they had, were able to pull the airship back to its mooring, the sailor was still hanging from the airship. An ambulance was waiting to take him to the hospital, but he said he was all right. People asked him how had he held on for so long. He told them he found that he had about four feet of rope. So while holding on with one hand, he tied the rope around his waist with the other, and the rope held him. He, held, he was just swinging free the whole time. Now, I want to talk to you today. I'm going to read Ephesians 6.10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. That man that was hanging in that rope, was hanging by the rope's strength and not his own. And I'm proclaiming to you today, if you, if you will be strong in the Lord, and, and, and how are you? And you say, well, how, how, should, how, how can I be strong in the Lord? How can I uh, depend upon him? Well, I, 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 I emphasize it over and over and over again. The strength and the power and the victory, healing, salvation, everything that God has for us is in His Word. Everything that God has for us is exactly bound up in the, in the, in the cover of the Holy Bible. He wants us to rest in His promises, to rest in His, the way He is telling us to do things and, and what He wants us to depend on. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Pro, I think it's Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. And he shall direct thy path. Glory to his name. That sailor could not have held on for an hour and 45 minutes with his own, with his own strength in his hands. There were people falling around him, dying. But he had enough about him to understand that what he was holding on to, he could wrap around himself and, and, and rest in that rope strength. And that's what I want to, to, to tell you today. That you can take God's word. And rest assured. That it is true. And if it is true. And it is. Every word of it is true. You can count on. Every word of it. Being real in your life. If you're, needing, if you're needing something in your life to, uh, to sustain you, I, pr I promise you God is your sustainer. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It didn't say some of your needs. It didn't say He, he would supply your needs if you were good enough. It says that he shall supply all your needs. You know, I, I was talking to some guys at, at the uh, jail yesterday. And, you know, uh, I was talking to them about, you know, just grace and how much God loves us. And it's not by our goodness, but it's by his mercy and grace the Bible says that we are saved, or by grace we are saved, through faith. God's unmerited favor. I don't care what you do and how hard you work. 
You cannot work hard enough to get God or to to probe God or to prove to God that you are good enough for Him to save you. It's only by His grace. He loves you and He cares for you. I didn't realize that for a lot of years. For a lot of years, I thought I put God, I made God human with human emotions that, that when you don't do what he asks you to do, he pouts and sticks his lip out and doesn't speak to you and, you know, just lets you suffer. And, 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 and that was wrong. And it just pushed me to get further away from him. But when I come to understand like Luke 15, 11 through 24, like the prodigal son, when I read that and fully understood that God was just waiting on me all those years, all those years, to just turn around and come home, you know, he ran to me. My goodness, it, it, it's amazing. It is amazing what you can learn in Luke 15, 11 through 24, if you'll just read it and apply it to yourself. That young man was in a bad position, but he started home. And when the, the Bible says, when the father saw him in a distance, said he ran, the father ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and put a robe on his back and shoes on his feet, and a ring on his finger and killed the fatted calf and celebrated celebrated that boy was prepared to be a servant for the rest of his days but his father god this is a picture of god his father restored him slid his feet right back up under the table that he had left why because of grace and mercy and love that the father had for his son God has that same love and mercy for all of us. And you say, well, I've never been born again. I don't, you know, I don't know how to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm here to tell you today that Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That is all it takes to be born again. All you have to do is confess Jesus as Lord of your life and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Why? To justify you in the eyes of a holy God. Glory to his name. Won't you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today? If you're born again and, and, and needing something from God, look to God. Wrap yourself in His promises. Reside in His strength. Uh, depend upon Him. And I promise you, depend on Him. The Bible says to cast all your cares on Him, for He cares for you. Won't you do that today? Look to God's Word for your strength and your, and your deliverance in a time that, that maybe, maybe you think is, you're on your last leg when all you've got to do is wrap God's promises around you. Depend upon them. When you start putting God's Word into your life, I told them this, this yesterday at the jail. I said, when you start getting dependent upon God's Word and put enough Word into, into your life that the Holy Spirit, when a situation comes up, that the Holy Spirit has something to work with, then that, that He can bring to your mind a Scripture that's the answer to the problem that stands before you. Put God's Word in your life and watch Him deliver you time and time and time again. Glory to God. Go to our website and let us know what's going on in your life. If God's working in your life, if you've been born again through this podcast, we want to know it. We want to be in touch with you. We want to hear from you. We want to know what's going on in your life. 
go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. Get in contact with us. You know, God is blessing blessing me through this podcast. Oh, I get a I get a thrill to know just what God is doing in people's lives. I pray for you earnestly daily that he, that God would touch your hearts and lives through this podcast and strengthen you. Go to our website and let us know what's going on in your life. It's the-prodigalson.com.